It's been a while since we last explored a menu animation. Last weekend, while browsing our thoughts for some fresh inspiration, I came across this website which won site of the day last year and one detail really stood out. It featured this really sleek full screen overlay menu that, when triggered, pushes the entire site content down to make space for the navigation. I thought it would be the perfect concept to rebuild, especially after spending the past few weeks on some pretty intricate animations. Honestly, I was just in the mood for something more chill. So I spent a few hours putting together this super clean, minimal menu that captures the same effect. Clicking the toggle smoothly pushes the side content down and reveals the menu with a polished, fluid animation. The design is intentionally minimal but it's super flexible. You can easily make it your own by adjusting the colors, fonts or layout. It's also fully responsive and looks just as clean on mobile devices. In this video, I'll show you how to build this full screen menu using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and some really basic GSAP. If you find my work helpful, give the video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to access the source code for this project along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump in. Let's start by setting up the HTML structure. We'll begin with the nav element which includes two main parts the logo and the toggle button. For the logo, I am adding a simple anchor tag with an image inside it. This will be our logo PNG. The toggle button is split into two sections, a label and a hamburger icon. The label is just a paragraph element and the hamburger icon contains two span elements. We'll style those later with CSS. Next up is the menu overlay. Now, instead of placing all the menu content like the links and image directly inside the overlay, I'm wrapping everything inside a separate element called menu overlay content. This gives us more flexibility and lets us animate the menu content independently from the overlay background. If you look at the original animation, you'll notice that when the menu opens, the entire content shifts downward slightly as a part of the reveal effect. To recreate that, we'll apply a clip path animation to the menu overlay and a transform animation to the menu overlay content wrapper. Inside that, we'll divide the content into two parts, one wrapper for the image which we'll call menu media wrapper and another for the text content called menu content wrapper. This media wrapper will include a simple image element which will sit on the left side of the screen. The content wrapper will be then divided into two sections, menu content main and menu footer. To create a column layout, we'll split both of these sections into two columns each. Inside menu content main, the first column will contain five main navigation links. The second column will hold additional links, which we'll label as menu tags. In the footer, we'll just add some placeholder paragraphs to simulate content information and location details. That's everything we need for the menu itself. Now to make sure the page doesn't feel empty, let's add some content behind it. I'll create a container that holds all the main website content. Later, when the menu opens, we'll use GSAP to push this container downward as a part of the push animation. Inside this container, I'm adding three sections, a hero section, a banner section, and an outro section. The hero section will contain a single heading, the banner will have an image, and the outro section will include one more heading to wrap things up. That's it for the HTML setup. Let's move on to styling now. To start, I've imported the inter font from Google Fonts to ensure we have a clean, modern typeface. Then, I've defined a few root variables for the background and foreground colors, as well as the menu background, secondary text color, and the border color for the hamburger icon. This makes it easier to manage and update the styles later on. Next, I'll reset some basic styles using the universal selector, removing default margins and paddings, and setting box sizing to border box. For the body, I'll apply the inter font as a fallback for the new Montreal. Images will be set to cover their containers while maintaining the full width and height with object fit set to cover to ensure consistent scaling. Headings will use a large font size with medium weight, slightly negative letter spacing and a tight line height for a bold modern feel. Paragraphs will have a slightly smaller size and carry the same font weight to maintain consistency. Links will appear without underlines and will inherit the foreground color. I'll give them a slightly larger size and keep the same font weight. Now let's style the main container that holds the website content. I'll position it relative, make sure its vertical transform is set to neutral and apply the background and text colors using our predefined variables.
for page sections, I'll make sure they take up the full width and height of the viewport with centered alignment both vertically and horizontally. I'll add padding for spacing and hide any overflow to prepare for animations. Inside each section, I'll restrict the heading width slightly to create a more readable layout. The image inside the banner section will appear slightly faded by lowering their opacity. Now let's move on to the navigation styles. I'll fix the nav to the top left corner, stretch it across the full viewport and disable pointer events initially to avoid interference. It will sit above other elements using a higher Z index. The menu bar at the top will also be fixed with spacing and alignment applied to position the logo and the menu toggle. I'll enable pointer events here so users can interact with the toggle. The logo will be styled with a fixed width and height values to keep it compact. For the toggle button, I'll use a flex layout with spacing between the label and the icon. I'll also apply cursor style to indicate it's clickable. The toggle label will be hidden behind an overflow container and I'll apply a transform to its paragraph to allow animated slide transitions later. I'll enable will change for better performance during those transitions. Next, I'll style the hamburger icon. I'll make it circular, center the contents both vertically and horizontally and stack two spans with a small gap. I'll also apply a subtle border using the variable we defined earlier. Each span will be absolutely positioned and given a slim height. I'll set the transform origins to center and apply a smooth transition curve to make the animation feel polished. The first span will be positioned slightly upward and the second one slightly downward to create the classic hamburger look. When the menu is active, I'll rotate both spans into an X shape by adjusting their positions and rotating them in opposite directions. I'll also scale them slightly for added sharpness. Now for the menu overlay and its content wrapper. Both will be fixed to the screen, filling the entire viewport. I'll assign the text color and again ensure overflow is hidden. The main overlay will have a background color and start with a clip path that effectively hides it. I'll use fill change to optimize for animation performance. The content wrapper will be positioned above the menu background and start with a vertical offset so we can animate it into place. I'll also enable pointer events so users can interact with the content. Next, I'll style the media wrapper that contains the image. I'll give it a flexible width ratio and set its initial opacity to zero so it fades in during the menu animation. Again, I'll apply wheel change to prep it for smooth transitions. Inside, the image will appear faded by reducing its opacity even further. Then, we move to the content wrapper beside it which will take up more space and use flex layout to organize its children. The main content inside will be absolutely centered using a combination of top, left and transform. This helps align the navigation links perfectly within the screen. The footer will be centered horizontally and placed at the bottom with auto margins. Both the menu content and footer will use the same width and padding laid out using flex with spacing between columns. I'll align items to the bottom to keep the structure grounded. Each menu column will be arranged vertically with small spacing between items. The first column will be slightly wider than the second to emphasize the primary links. Links inside the menu will use larger font size and generous line spacing to create a bold editorial layout. Tags in footer text will use the secondary foreground color to create a visual hierarchy and keep the emphasis on primary links. Next, I'll define a utility class for split text animations. I'll give it a relative positioning and enable wheel change on transform so the GSAP animations stay smooth. Finally, I'll add responsive styles for smaller screens. On smaller viewports, I'll reduce the font size of the headings and letter spacing for better readability. I'll also let headings take up full width instead of limiting them. The media wrapper will be hidden entirely on mobile to save space. Both the main content and footer will stretch across the full width and the content will stack vertically instead of side by side. I'll also align everything to the left and add more spacing between menu sections. Menu links and tags will use smaller sizes to fit nicely on mobile screens. That wraps up all the CSS. Let's jump into the JavaScript and bring this menu to life with GSAP. Let's start by setting up the tools we'll use in this animation. I'm importing GSAP as our main animation library. Then I bring in two additional GSAP plugins, Custom Ease and Split Text. Custom Ease lets us define a custom easing curve for smoother transitions and Split Text helps us break text lines so we can animate them individually. 
Finally, I import Lenis, which we'll use for smooth scrolling. Now, once the DOM is fully loaded, we register the plugins with GZAP. This step is important. GZAP needs to know that we are going to use them. Then, I create a custom using function and name it Hop. This gives our animations a more expressive and smooth motion compared to standard easing curves. We'll use the same easing across most transitions to keep the feel consistent. Next, I initialize Lenis and create a request animation frame loop. This is required because Lenis uses request animation frame to keep it scrolling smooth and in sync with the browser's frame rate. So we are telling it to update continuously on each frame. After that, I move on to setting up our text trivial animations. I start by selecting all the menu columns. These are the columns that contain our links and tags inside the overlay. Then I create an empty array called split text by container which will use to store the split text instances for each container. Now I loop through each menu column and for every container I grab all the anchor and paragraph elements inside. These are the elements we want to animate line by line. For each of those elements I use split text to break the text into lines. I also apply line mask and assign a class called line to each line span so we can target them easily with GZAP or CSS. Once split text has split the lines, I right away set their vertical position to be offset above their normal position. This is done using GZAP's set method and it prepares each line for the revel animation later when they'll slide into view. Then finally, I push each container's split text data into our main array so we can reference them later when the menu opens or closes. Now that we have prepared our split text lines, let's move on to setting up the menu animation. First, I am selecting all the key DOM elements we will be interacting with. I grab the menu content container. Then, I select the menu toggle button, the menu overlay, and the menu overlay content wrapper. I also grab the media wrapper which contains the image on the left and the menu columns for our animated text, the label that says menu, and the hamburger icon itself. After that, I define two flags. Is menu open tracks whether the menu is currently open or not, and is animating helps us prevent any interaction while an animation is still running. Then I attach a click event listener to the toggle button. Inside that listener, I write away check if an animation is already in progress. If it is, I return early to avoid breaking the flow. Now I handle the open state. If the menu is currently closed, I set his animating flag to true so we don't allow another click mid animation. Then I stop Lenny's scroll instance. This pauses all scrolling behavior while the menu is open so nothing scrolls unexpectedly behind the overlay. Next, I create a GSAP timeline to manage the sequence of animations. The first animation slides the menu label upward, hiding it off screen. This creates space for us to later animate it back in when closing the menu. Right after that, I push the entire container downward. This is what creates that signature push effect where the side content moves out of the way for the menu. At the same time, I animate the clip path of the menu overlay to fully reveal it. This transition goes from a closed polygon to an open rectangle that covers the full screen. I also reset the vertical offset of the menu overlay content wrapper. We had shifted it upward earlier, so it brings it back into its natural position. Then I fade in the media wrapper using an opacity transition. This gives the left side image a smooth, delayed reveal, adding a polish to the animation. After setting up the overlay and image reveal, I animate the text lines that we previously split using split text. I loop through each container split lines, flatten them into one array, and animate them all to slide down into place from above. I add a negative stagger value here, so the lines appear in a reverse order, giving the reveal a bit more rhythm and character. Finally, I activate the hamburger icon by adding a class that triggers the CSS transformation into an X shape. And at the very end of the timeline, I call a function that resets this animating flag back to false. This allows the user to interact again once the animation is fully complete. I also set his menu open flag to true, so the next click will trigger the closing animation. Now let's handle what happens when the menu is open and the user clicks to close it. Inside the else block, I start by setting his animating flag to true. This makes sure we don't trigger another animation while the current one is still playing. Then I remove the active class from the hamburger icon so it transitions back to its original hamburger shape using CSS. After that, I create a new GSAP timeline for the closing sequence. The first thing I do is bring the main site container back to its original position. This effectively pulls the entire page content back up into view. At the same time, I animate the menu over the clip path back to its initial hidden state. This collapses it vertically and removes it from the screen. Then I shift the menu overlay content wrapper back upward using a transform. This gives the menu content a clean exit motion, mirroring how it entered. Right after that, I bring the menu label back into view by resetting its vertical position. 
I also reduce the opacity of the menu content column slightly as a subtle visual cue while the rest of the menu exits. Once all these animations are done, I run a callback using GSAP's call method. Inside that, I reset all the split text lines by instantly moving them back up off screen. This is important because it reinitializes their state so they are ready to animate back in next time the menu opens. Then I reset the opacity of the content columns back to full and I hide the media wrapper by setting its opacity to zero. At this point, the menu has been fully closed so I reset the ease animating flag to false and I start line scrolling again so the user can interact with the page normally. Finally, I update ease menu open flag to false so the next toggle click will reopen the menu. And that wraps up the entire JavaScript logic for this animation. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.